Hello and welcome back to Compiler Programming. Today we are going to be continuing what we started in the last video, so if you haven't yet watched it, I highly recommend you go back and check it out. And that video, I mentioned that right now we have this very strange situation where we sort of need to put values as part of a descriptor, which kind of make doesn't make much sense right because descriptor is supposed to be something that you put on a value to describe its type but then uh, for this uh, function overload sets we, for some reason we now need to put values um, well, here put put values uh, as a part of a descriptor like that, that that's just not good design and leads to confusion and, and all kinds of other problems um, so we should think about it somehow differently what can be done? One idea that I have, and this is what I want to try out today, which I have no idea how it will actually turn out, is to make value itself into an overload set. And that would effectively mean that not only functions can be overloaded, but any value that we want. Which is kind of an interesting concept, right? Because uh, that would mean that you like you imagine that you have some variable let's say like you have uh, I'll use var because they have to be different types say you have or you can write something like this in C you could write int foo is 42 or sorry, equals 42 and then you could write const char foo is uh, error foo or bar and that would be perfectly fine and then when you do that you could do something like int x is foo plus two and the compiler would understand that you mean that you want to take the integer value of x and then you could say uh, print half uh, foo and here the compiler expects a const char, so this is what it would take uh, as a thing. It can be confusing as well. Like I could imagine uh, programs uh, written in this way would be quite hard to understand, uh, but it's an interesting capability of the compiler, and the fact that the compiler will have this feature doesn't necessarily mean that it will be exposed in this way to the users, because a lot of compilers actually have something like this, especially when it comes to constants, like uh, uh, pi comes to mind. So you usually have like different versions with uh, various precision, right? I don't know actually what are the other digits of pi, never was into that movement. Um, but the idea is that you want the pi for float and we want to pi for double and said different compilers do differently so in c it's just using define and then the the value is kind of truncated when you put it uh, in the expression uh, go just has a very long constant and then it, it is turned to to the right value so there are these uh, various things that compilers do to kind of achieve the same thing and it would be I think kind of neat if uh, our compiler just had this uh, generic concept of overload set for any identifier or value in in the current state because we don't really have identifiers like we don't have source code so why would there be uh, any identifiers so let's let's think what that could look like and obviously this will break basically everything because all of our code relies on the value being what it is right now but we can try to sort through that so the first thing is uh, we will no longer have descriptor type function overload set like this is just not a thing and instead we would need to basically take this thing and add it to the value and say actually we take the current value we say that this is value atom or I don't know how to call it value overload 
and then value will turn be turned into overload set. So we now have something like this, where we say value overload is overload list, and we no longer need a double indirection here, I believe. So now this is our new value. And it's interesting to think about how we gonna deal with this stuff. Like maybe it would be convenient if overload list contained only one overload, then we would uh, sort of not need to have this interaction, but let's just keep with the most straightforward version for now. Okay, so this is what is happening here. Uh, let's think if it changes anything else in this file. I do not think so, like we don't have this overload set anymore. I will not even try to build because it's gonna be just plain, uh, plain bad. And also we will need to decide what are the rules for what can go into overload set. Like, do you, are you allowed to put any types in there or are you, allowed, are you only allowed, for example, to put different integer types or some stuff like this. But for now, let's uh, think about what the changes that we will need to make to make that happen. Okay, so we have a bunch of functions that accept a value. So the first thing that we will need to do probably is uh, something like a helper that will just give us a single value if uh, a single overload if value only contains one overload. And we can do it maybe something like so, value overload star, maybe uh, get if single overload, So we, this will get a value and if it is a single overload, it will return it. Otherwise it will return um, zero or null. And this is, I like to indicate functions that kind of uh, can return null with this prefix. So it is, it's uh, visible from the color. Obviously it would be nice if we had some kind of optional type, but this is really awkward in C, so convention is uh, all that is possible to do without too much trouble. Okay, so we get the value, and if the value overload count is one, then we return value overloads list, yeah, like so. I mean, we can be more explicit uh, for people who are not used to pointers, like we are basically uh, returning the address of the first uh, element in the list. Otherwise, we return uh, zero. Okay, so that's good. Um, this function is gonna be a bit of a problem because, I mean, it will become way more complicated, right? We, we can't just now say, oh, is this the same type? What we actually want to know is, are there any matching types between the overload sets? Like, 
is there a combination of these two things that makes sense and not only that but we actually want to get the result of uh, that comparison as the value that we can then use to implement our logic because uh, we, we, we will need to know what is the operand for the chosen overload of, uh, of this value. So there is going to be a fix me here and maybe we can actually do it like this. Uh, value overload uh, star a overload is uh, maybe get if single overload of a then we do the same of b like this is again not how the function will end up being in the end and we say assert a overload and assert b overload this is what we want to have for now because apart from the function overload sets, we don't ever call this uh, thing with uh, overloads. And we could probably make majority of our tests pass, if not all with this setup before we move on to actually implementing this properly. So hopefully this will carry us a bit now, okay, we now have an issue that <coughs> our uh, predefined void value is no longer correct. So now we need to say value overload uh, void value overload is uh, what was this before, All right? And then here we say void value overload or to be more precise overloads list is this and then overload count is one. So this should be fine. Let's try to compile and see a very very long list of errors it says even stopping after 100 errors so we definitely have a very long way to go but we can deal with them now one by one okay a function descriptor so returns is a value and right now we, we don't really want to allow functions to return different things because that would be a bit problematic. Let's just uh, put it that way. It's, it's not impossible to make that happen. And there are some interesting things that might stem out of that eventually. But for now, what I want to do is I want to say that functions uh, actually will get um, the return of the function is a value overload same as argument list because otherwise as that we will have problems like our function overloads will um, be on the level of value not on the level of each individual argument so this is uh, this seems much better to me let's try to build this again we still have issues so here it's supposed to be a overload and b overload right and a bunch of other stuff that is now problematic okay so here essentially we will need to wrap a bunch of stuff so maybe let's create a helper yeah let's create a helper that says value star single overload value and it will accept a pointer to this 
value overload or like so and it will basically do what was happening here uh, but for the overload stuff okay so allocate value overload overload list is this we don't need the ampersand and overload count is one now we can make pretty straightforward refactoring of the code that we had before and we do it like this and let's check if this function is now better yeah it is so one question you might be asking is uh, why wouldn't i actually change a value uh, to be something else instead of introducing like kind of one more layer and the answer is in the fact is what i'm doing right now so i want my program to maximally break when i do this kind of big change because i don't want to end up with a situation where we accidentally forgot to change one of the places that was using the old thing into the new one and then you have all kinds of weird results it is uh, much better to ask the compiler to help you as much as it can with uh, this refactoring and that means uh, kind of changing the uh, changing something that would cause a breakage okay Let's continue. It's pretty, pretty routine stuff right now, but you have to do it at certain points. There is no really way around this. Okay. Value as function. So this is also a funky one in a sense because now we need to like, this is used for our tests and we need to only do that again our test will not be able to resolve the overloading so whatever we pass to our test better be not polymorphic functions otherwise it will uh, be problematic to it okay value overload star uh, overload is uh, maybe get a single overload of value assert overload and now we replace uh, value with uh, this stuff okay this seems good what happens here this basically is uh, single overload value of return value and like so it's good essentially is the same stuff see function return value so this accepts this function returns yeah, that actually should return value overload so we don't need to wrap it into anything at all okay making progress that's good and now we can use our wrapper function to to make this into a value okay it looks like we are done with this file but obviously there are way way more things uh, to fix it looks like all of them are inside spec so this is obviously where we go next okay so 
this stuff is exactly the same as what we had elsewhere we need the single uh, value overload or is it called by the way i think it's called single overload value okay this is good what do we do for the move value this is an interesting question because move i think the best option would be that by the time we get to move or any of these functions we should have already resolved our overloads so let's first write it like that and then see if this is something that is at all uh, reasonable so value register for descriptor is now supposed to also probably return a single overload so our fix is not even the correct one that we did in uh, here so we do not need to wrap this because it's usually used at the very edge where as i said by the time hopefully we will already have resolved the overloads same here i would like to only make this assertion on a single overload that we chosen to be used it's good plus or minus the same deal and we have a same value type I guess let's do it this way. So we introduce a new function, which is gonna be same overload type. And think how we go from there. the same thing for reserve stack actually so again we shouldn't have wrapped this into to this it's better if it stays as it was This is an interesting question. I guess plus or minus should actually return a, a proper value. So let's just use the single, whatever was it called, single overload value and wrap it here. So I guess my idea would be that if you have an operator or you have a function, this is where the overload resolution happens. And then uh, for, for the internals, like this code, this is where we only use a single uh, known value. So let's see if this is at all reasonable to to do uh, let's right now switch this out 
but we might come back here later and see what is uh, what is the right way to do it okay just a bunch of fixing everywhere uh, This is a bit tedious, but that's fine. We are making good progress. Also, that tells you a bit, right? If you have to do so much copy pasting, then some part of your program changes you should take a long and hard look if the what you were doing is the is the right thing to be doing right uh, or you could uh, maybe have a better uh, better obstruction or better way to to deal with this stuff Submit value, uh, value star, single overload value of uh, function, function, overload, sorry, function value. Okay, this is good. Builder result. This is, here we would basically expect, uh, like a single builder should not produce an overloaded value. So here we actually can do assertions. It's not even like temporary one, but uh, this is actually how it's supposed to work. Uh, we say here value star function is this, and then, we say value overload star overload is uh, maybe what's it called? Maybe maybe get if single overload of uh, function and as I said, this assertion is actually what we want. At this point, there should be only one overload. Okay, we can even do it as a pre assertion as well. We can say that function overload count is one. Like we, we want that to be true. Okay, and then for this result descriptor, now it's just overload descriptor. That's fine. Uh, function returns is void value overload. I'm not sure what all these jazz is. So here it is sort of the same dense, so maybe be nice to extract it into a function. Let's do it right away to not produce more stuff than we need to. Um, that would be value uh, overload star function. Mm, I don't want to call it function overload because that's uh, function get. value overload mm. not the best name either but the best I can come up with right now it will do this stuff 
it will return it and now we can right away reuse it over here and say reload is this okay that passes and now we can change it to here which also actually makes it slightly easier to read if it worked uh, not sure what the issue here is and don't want to go too much into uh, checking right now so let's just continue with next stuff okay maybe it's supposed to be that way yeah okay we are making progress getting back to our argument list this is a very simple change we just do overload and as far as return value goes yeah i guess we need to wrap it so we do a single overload value of this that seems good function return it will probably do the same dance where it will wrap the previous value into this stuff i guess okay um to do this I believe is actually happening already but let's let's keep this comment this is not what we're doing anyway right now builder descriptor uh, returns descriptor not sure what the issue is ah it's uh, to return I guess so for now we will add another fix me because here we actually do need to choose the right overload so we can do choose overload or just overloads and then we can get back to it because here what is supposed to happen like imagine you have these uh, two different types in the same under the same value and you want to return but the function return expects only a specific uh, type so you want to iterate over all the available types find the one that matches what we are trying to return and then return that but for now this is not we are, what we are going to do we are gonna do uh, the overload star overload is maybe get a single overload of two return we assert that it's there at least for now and then we can use that uh, i cannot spell assert apparently we change it here to this to this move value is this and i think our return is actually messed up here because what it should be returning is uh, this stuff right it should return the return actually i think this function shouldn't return anything at all to be honest like it's not like return statement returns something right it's a 
last thing that happens you're not supposed to uh, be able to assign it to something else that would be just weird okay we have call function overload set so the first thing is this is not a thing and then I guess what is supposed to happen is we need to basically swap these two functions around uh, one of them so this previous one needs to now just be uh, no okay let's let's do it this way let's take this call function value move it up so we don't need this forward declaration anymore and we're gonna call it now uh, call function overload or call function overload yes i wonder how many times i said the word overload in this video um okay this no longer happens and the rest should more or less just work if we change a couple of things around let me increase the size of the editor slightly so we can see all of the code even though we have this stuff here which i can remove but it will appear every time i build so um value overload that's good same here and then result and result we actually need to wrap back into a value so as you can see like all of these um stuff introduces a lot of wrapping and unwrapping of values here and back and this is why i was saying at the beginning of the video that maybe it would be nice if as if the value has a single overload it's sort of still the same thing um, but this is maybe the optimization we want to do later because right now i want everybody to check if it is actually a single thing so i don't know okay anyhow now the previous thing that was doing overload is now the actual thing because um, both the value and the thing to call might have multiple things so we don't have overload set instead of overload set we just simply have the original thing which is the function that we are trying to call okay and it's uh, like this to call overload list overload index probably likes this yes now we can change this to same overload type although this is also interesting because here we would need this extra loop that would uh, check that all of the possible overloads of the value uh, are not matching uh, the arguments of the function so this is another uh, fix me for our main implementation but uh, right now we will again uh, cheese it and say overload oh sorry value overload star um, arg overload is um, maybe like this assert arg overload and this is what we can shove into here again this is not the final 
um, thing that we will be actually doing. Okay, another issue that is happening here that for this call we will need to aggregate sorry aggregate the matched uh, overloads into some kind of uh, list so we need a temporary storage for our stuff so let's create one and i will not even bother printing it for now so we say value overload star um, arg overload list is temp allocate size of size of value overload star and then how many we need is how many there are argument count, I guess. Okay. So we have this uh, thing and we can shove into here saying our arg overload list overload index is um, arg overload or actually this should be arg index it's not the because overload index is uh, for the function itself and we are interested here in arguments but now we can pass uh, arg overload list to this thing and it is much better if I could figure out what's wrong here that would be pretty nice ah it doesn't support two arguments I suppose to have multiplied them I think I want mm, to have like temp allocate array or something that I just pass the type and the count and does this multiplication for me but it's fine for now and what is the problem here I take the list oh this actually is supposed to be like this I guess and then argument list now needs to be like this so I don't need to do it here yes so now we are passing a list of pointers to the thing Hmm. not sure what the error here is I probably should add a functionality to show like an error next to the line but it's not there so let's right now continue and we will get back there when we need to make if as I said I think for these functions I probably want to only accept uh, this kind of stuff a single value because it will be very very confusing if you could like if on multiple things so maybe I will accept value but I will just do this uh, unwrapping here uh, maybe get blah, blah, blah. value assert overload and like this mm. let's see what else we have compare 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 
well let's do it the same way for now and then continue with the next thing because right now i just want to get to compiling and probably crashing program as fast as i can Do, do, do. Yeah, they are V overload, A overload, and then the same here. We need uh, this kind of refactoring is pretty fiddly. But the thing is, there isn't really much ideas would help you with it either. So hmm. what can you do? Reg A, reg A. This seems fine, except that we now need to extract uh, this thing into... Hmm. I guess here it is safe to just wrap it like this because I mean it is a single overload uh, there is no really two ways about it and now the final touch is wrapping it back up in here getting closer every bit of the way I'm gonna skip this macro for now because um, to debug macros you need to figure out what was wrong in the first place. This is also a test I will comment out for now and add a comment to come back to it. This is perfectly fine here we have this um, thing that we can compare values instead of descriptors directly and it will take care of unwrapping the the stuff same here Okay. Even becomes a bit shorter, which is very, very nice. And simpler. Good. Okay. So this is another one of those mismatches between what expects and what's happening. So probably plus is expecting us to, to have a A value overload but it's getting a value so that's something we definitely need to take care of uh, here uh, we can do the unwrapping do since this is a test, I can do check overload. Okay, this is good. Mm. When we call, we do need a value, but this is supposed to be uh, an overload. So when we do this, we need to wrap it. And say message value is a single overload value of message overload. That's good. Probably will need a bunch more of these uh, in other places. But let's see what's happening. So, descriptor struct field. This is actually another place where 
I there is an interesting question whether we want to support overloads because you may may think that we like we could implement unions essentially as an overload because this is one of the this basically the use case but i don't want to go into that right now so what i will do instead is in struct field actually struct field already just has just a descriptor yeah so it's it's fine um what is the actual issue actual issue is that rcx is a value i guess right uh, no rcx is an operand size struct struct pointer descriptor ah yeah okay so our arguments are also values now so we need to unwrap this here as well say maybe single if overload size struct overload I, actually this is what i want to make the name of this not the argument so this goes here this goes here assert goes here and we can continue with the rest Mm. not exactly sure what's wrong here i guess what's wrong is now this is a value overload and the rest is not actual issues yeah and now we are almost at the end of the file we still have a couple of issues here and there but we are getting very very close this is value overload this is um, okay the, our temp is wrong because it is on the stack reserved like this i think i will change this to just do stack reservation without uh, without this call for now because this will be annoying otherwise we, we need to create like an assign function that accepts uh, overloaded values in order for this to be pretty again and this is something i might do off video to clean all this up but for now uh, let's just do temp is uh, reserve stack of builder and array pointer descriptor uh, i guess what is the last argument to stack i'm not entirely certain ah like what it assigned to i guess uh, so we will need to to deal with it one way or the other okay that's fine uh, temp maybe And then and we also have index with the same problem so let's deal with that as well Split this up a bit so it's easier to read. 
OK. Now we can actually start looking at the build errors in more uh, precise stuff. So value star difference in levels of redirection from uh, what you were thinking. Ah, yeah. So because this needs to be co function, no, not value overload, code function overload. Okay, one out. And now we have these uh, issues with plus. Well, for now, let's just fix them like so. Mm. I guess I will fix it at this source because otherwise it will be mildly annoying to deal with. Where is our plus? Yes, it is this here. And maybe this would be actually the right way, the right place to, to fix this. So we did it somewhere below for jumps, I believe. So maybe I could copy it, oh, whatever. Doesn't matter. Value overload star A overload is maybe get a single overload. It's good of A and B and B and like so. We can do the same in minus. And this is again one of those uh, fix me where we actually would need to do some stuff. Oops. But right now, let's just get all of these to work. Okay, um, this is good. This is needs to be B overload and both of the things go into here. Yeah. Okay. I guess we have the same issue with uh, this stuff. X value, Y value. And then we put this into here, but we change slightly how we do this. So we don't have to change as much of the function. We just change things around. Okay. That is good. I can do the same stuff here, except here is not called X and Y, but that's fine. A, 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 and A, and B, and B. What else do we have? We have this stack S32 stuff that doesn't really work. So how is our stack 32 defined? It calls stack with descriptor and value, then it returns stack 
yeah so what's supposed to happen here is now like this id um we will need a helper function i guess because we want we, otherwise we'll have macro expansion problems so we say a b is uh, I don't want to go into why this is necessary because it has to do with weird macro stuff and there's probably going to be a separate episode and all the weird macro things we can do to, to help us with the readability, but this is not what this thing is about right now. I'll just type this in and hope that it works. So we say id uh, overload and then we create a value out of that like we were before. So this would be like single overload value of whatever uh, this id is and we are moving it also to to the concatenation here but the value defined is actually the correct one or oh, that did not work very beautifully <clears throat> but let's see what's now the issue um. Oh yeah, so now the issue is that these things actually <laughs> are exactly the same thing and we don't even need to check, I guess. There is probably some macro expansion problem that we are observing. Uh, before identifier overload yeah so it seems that my macro foo did not actually work let's see what is happening and why didn't it work so i call this thing which calls uh, this thing which concatenates A and B seems all right to me, but maybe I'm wrong. Okay, how do how can we do it without this stuff? I guess I could do what I was doing before and just wrap it uh, this way. Wait, did I have missing phrase? No, I didn't. Okay, so this is fine. And then here I just unwrap it back, I guess. And use this maybe which is pretty safe because I just wrapped it into that thing. So it's supposed to be the, the right value. Okay. Mm, that seems now correct. Function incompatible types. Descriptor is not a member of the value. Yeah. So here we also need to wrap these guys in in this function. And this is sort of why people are generally wary of macros because debugging this code is really, really awkward. You never really know what is happening with what you're trying to do. Okay, 
what's here it's basically the same issue so again let's just be cheesy and do this i mean in test it's sort of okay to do it but later on we need to figure out what is the really the right way to to make that happen call function value this is interesting uh, we can get back to this one i want to check other stuff multiply and stuff so this is a reverse problem now where we changed uh, all of this stuff to expect values so we need to wrap it in values that's good uh, here we have the same issue so maybe this macro is no longer such a <laughs> great idea um, but we'll see we'll see stack descriptor yeah it should be like this and this is one of those places like i said we should introduce this assign uh, function that would take two values and all of these will become unnecessary when that happens okay temp overload uh, there is no longer a thing called temp overload so i will just do it uh, this way temp of temp uh, maybe i should introduce temp overload let's do that temp overload is overload of temp and we made it mm. The same thing goes for index. Okay, let's plow on. Now we have this call function value is not getting what it wants to have. What is it getting? It's getting a value star and a value star star which is not what I expected <sighs> we're done at least we are compiling but i would be really really surprised if we now run tests and nothing crashes because that was a lot of changes so i would expect well apparently <laughs> apparently i did a good job of going through all of this stuff without actually exploding um, i think i want to even commit this as a separate thing uh, saying that uh, introduce uh, overloading for all values okay this video is getting quite long, but I still want to do at least a tiny bit of what we were actually originally tried to. So the first thing is uh, trying to see if the function overloading still stands. And there are probably a couple of issues here, which is fine. So overload descriptor is no longer a thing as is overload list as is this thing so like this is not how it looks like anymore instead again what we wanted to do from the beginning is uh, how we can write 
value overload is a lot. We have value overload list is these things and we can say um, Is our overload list actually star star or just star? Yeah, that's <laughs> that's not great. It's I would not don't want to change it right now because it's gonna be another round of very uh, long changes. Uh, so I guess we will copy values for now, uh, which is not really great, but it's uh, it's something we can survive for. Uh, this stuff. Let me just add a fix me for me for myself, so I know what to clean up later on. Should be star star. Okay. So we now have an array that contains uh, two overloads and. In reality, we need to. Yeah, this is gonna be quite nasty. We need to extract uh, the overload list and then immediately dereference it to copy. So like this, this copy should not be here. But it is right now, so it's fine. Uh, will you overload list syntax error? What is cannot convert from value overload to value overloads are mm. action value star difference and action with from function value different type from parameter. So no. This was correct, um, but now I'm a bit confused. Okay, value overload is uh, what? Overload list is overload. Overload list and overload count is our static array count of overload list. That's uh, good. Initializing with incompatible types. Should this actually be star cannot convert from value overload to value overload star oh yeah so this should be like this and Static array count, okay. Let's just hard code two. I thought I had this macro here now, but it's fine. So what don't you like? Compatible types, value overload star, and descriptor star. Which one is? Descriptor star exactly. I'm very, very, very confused. Um, value overload is descriptor and operand. We are supposed to have. Um, of them so okay let me just write this out because somehow i'm getting a bit tired and it's hard to figure out what is 
actually the problem here. Size of S64. And then I can say A and B. Okay. Very strange. But that's fine. Now we have call function value that supposed to be correct. Uh, declaration B, yeah. So X and Y. I said Y and X and Y. Okay. Rebuilding. Let's see if this works. It still does. So our uh, transform in overloads is also correct. Now, um, shall we do a very quick one for the values? Should support polymorphic values. I just want to kind of show you what uh, that might look like and I will not even use it in any of the any of the functions but let's just write a thing that um, checks like that function that returns us the compatible types out of two of them. So we will need to have uh, this stuff in a test and that's good we will need to introduce something like a value pair that will return uh, two pointers so imagine a situation where you have two overload sets there's there will be only one value or ideally there should be only one pair uh, that matches and it's an interesting question what happens when you have like multiple pairs matching uh, which one will be chosen or maybe you will get like an overload set that is uh, an intersection of uh, these two possibilities so I'm not even sure that any of that is a good idea or maybe we should still keep it only for the functions but I thought it's uh, still fun to to think how that might work so let's say Value pair uh, or star pair is uh, get get matching values from we pass overload and for example value value what value from S32 of zero. And we check now that, actually make, let's make 64 because this is the second one and I want to check that the function actually uh, does something. Uh, and we check that pair, uh, pair A is, a. Oh, sorry, is actually B. So we would call this function, it will take uh, this overload set and uh, find what would be the compatible value with uh, this constant that we are passing. Let's, let's do this. Check, 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 and the way it would work is by iterating through all the stuff. So the first thing is we need to introduce this uh, value pair in in C++ or something. You would just use std tuple or whatever but we don't have that luxury, so we say value uh, overload 
maybe it should actually be called value overload pair to be explicit a and b okay this is what we are going to return and as usual if we don't find a match then we return false so for u32 a index a index is less than a overload count plus plus a index so this is the outer loop we have exactly the same inner loop and we just say b index b index b overload count and b it's index not oh, lost letter i there for a moment uh, a index b index and we just do this very simple check where we say if same overload type of a a index or sorry a overload list a index and then the same for uh, b Then we return uh, value overload pair star pair or result is temp allocate uh, value overload pair, right? And return result and star result is uh, const value overload pair of uh, this stuff so maybe i will actually extract this into like helper variables so it is a bit easier to read and to understand same goes for b and b and here we can say a and b and a and b And if we iterated through everything and we weren't able to find some stuff, then, well, I guess that's uh, not happening. Oh, now we have uh, a bit of an issue. I need everything A and B. Oops. So this is gonna be A value, A value, and B value, B value. Okay, that's fine. Now this is called overload pair. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, this is supposed to be value from S32 and value from S64. Sounds uh, great. Uninitialized variable a index and b index that's a very good catch compiler thank you for that and let's check this out okay our test actually fails so i screwed up something along the way uh, this is something that we can debug though dev and mass solution and let's check that okay so we go into here we press start and
and we can step inside of uh, sorry press the wrong thing in there so we allocate the result this is good now actually this is not the function that we want this is the function that we want so let's look at our a value and b value so as we expect a value has overload of two right so one of them would be the s32 descriptor which is the first one and the second one will be s64 so uh, technically uh, this is where it should match so i'm not exactly sure why it failed uh, let's check this out so we have a we have b let's look at those so right now i obviously expect this to fail that's fine but now we go through the second thing now our a will be uh, 64 bits and the other one is also 64 so it's integer uh, that is so like this should be fine let's step into same overload type we step into this we go into default one and I expect that descriptor byte size for both of them will be the same otherwise it will be very very strange and all of our stuff will probably fail so same type returned true okay so it returned true we Oh, yeah, <laughs> I actually know what the problem is. And the problem is not with the code, it is with the test and the issue is in this copying. That is, uh, I said, not what we should be doing. We should just uh, store pointers. So if we wanted to compare this, I guess what we can do is we will uh, again do uh, check same type of pair A and B. Mm, value overload and descriptor. Uh, same. Oops. This is not going to be a very good test now because we are calling the same function inside the test as we're calling outside, but I guess at least it checks that the loop iteration is correct. We are done. We have all the tests passing. We have at least technical capability to have multiple overloads of the same value if we wanted to use it. If not, at least it provides the same exact functionality uh, for the functions as we had before, uh, but in a bit more generic way and in such a way that now we don't have this weird situation where descriptors contain values while it should be other way around so if you if you're one of two people who made this this far i thank you very much for watching and hopefully see you next time goodbye